could you maybe just, you know, start the discussion as to why you're so focused on fiber in the United States and, and where you think some of that value may be? Sure, certainly, certainly. And as I'd mentioned back in my career at USDA, you know, during my time focused on ingredients coming out of the ethanol industry, a lot of those ingredients were high fiber by their nature, just because the starch was being taken out of the corn and we were basically left with fiber, mineral and protein at that point in time. So we were really trying to figure out, okay, how well can the pig utilize these quote higher fiber ingredients? Now, that being said, we do know that there is, you know, a greater abundance of fibrous feedstuffs in this distiller's grains and ethanol byproducts. And that's where perhaps some of the, 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 the global aspect of it comes in when you talk about ingredients. You know, you go over to Europe, you know, where they use more small grains and there's different byproducts that are being brought in with different fiber levels and fiber types. You know, when you think about fiber, I think a lot of it comes back to the definition of what are we calling fiber, right? Some of it comes back to the analytics around it. I know having spent several years in the feed industry, I'm still somewhat surprised we're using crude fiber as an indicator on our on our feed labels when it really doesn't get into some of the, the, the functional aspects of, of fiber. And I think now some of the, you know, later analytical aspects we are able to dive more deeply into the functional aspects as well. 